All right, welcome back to another edition of Horseman Pro Football Talk Podcast. I am Brad. And I'm Hefe. All right, let's run down the remaining of the last couple games, um, just giving quick thoughts and picks. Uh, Texans at Dolphins. Look, I used to work with a guy. Um, I may have told you this story before. And, um, you know, when you would ask him a stupid question, he would turn around and say, don't be stupid, right? You're asking me who's going to win this game. Don't be, don't be stupid, right? Shout out to Joe. The Dolphins, they're feeling it, man. They, uh, the Chiefs lose last night. The Dolphins are in the first place in the AFC, the, and they know that. Tua has, so far, has made a liar out of me, and I fucking love it. You see I'm wearing a Dolphin shirt, which I've had this for, you know, seven years since I moved down here, and there's just no way that the Texans go into Miami um, this could get ugly. The, the Dolphins could use this to really show their prowess and and really put an ass beating on the Texans. Yeah, I expect this to be the kind of game where the Dolphins have their starters coming out, you know, at the end of the third, maybe before the end of the third, because they're just going to be dominating. The Texans are on a fast track to the number one overall pick. Agreed. Uh, all right. Next game is the Broncos at the Panthers. Who cares? No, I'm sure. I'm sure Panthers fans care. Uh, Broncos fans are probably going to be doing something else this weekend. They're starting to make plans, uh, family plans, and you know, going to the mall and shit like that instead of watching football. Uh, the Broncos are a mess. They're just an absolute mess. So much so that I, you know, they're in North Carolina. I'm taking the Panthers. I'm also taking the Panthers. I've heard some people say, even though the Panthers, I believe, are one and two with Steve Wilkes head coach. I hear some people saying that uh, maybe he should be you know, seriously considered to take over the jobs. So Panthers fans seem to like them right now. And I think they can win against the Broncos. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bears at the Jets. <laughs> this is another um, don't be stupid. The Jets struggled uh, yesterday. They really struggled yesterday. But that wasn't the fault of the Jets. That was Bill Belichick doing what Bill Belichick does best. The Bears are not the Patriots' defense, and they're coming into New York against a pissed-off Jets team that's that's wanting to prove they can win this division. This could get ugly, too. Yeah, the Bears' defense isn't nearly what the Patriots is at all. And Matt Everflus, I don't know how to take this. He said earlier that Justin Fields was day-to-day with a shoulder injury, but that it could be season-ending. So I wasn't sure what he like, maybe if it's serious enough to keep him out a couple of weeks, maybe we just shut him down for the years, how I'm kind of deciphering that. I'm just expecting Justin Fields to not be playing and their defense is terrible. So like you said, this could get ugly uh, for the Bears in this one. All right. Falcons at commanders at this point, this is another don't be stupid. Uh, the commanders, they're heading in the right direction. I don't, I don't know what's going on, and I don't know if it's legit. I don't know if it's sustainable, but right now it doesn't matter. They're feeling good. They're feeling it. They're in Washington in front of their home crowd, uh, and I do. there's no way the Falcons are going there and win this game. I wouldn't say no way because I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Falcons win this game, but what it comes down to for me is the commanders are getting their defensive linemen healthy. Chase Young, Montez Sweater back. Um, and their defensive line is one of the best in the NFL at the current moment. And that is the perfect formula to stop a team that loves to run the ball. So I think the commanders are able to stop the Falcons offense enough to win this game. All right. Where are we at? Bucks at Browns? Yep. Um, you know, interesting game, maybe. What do you think? I know, you know? I mean, I know you're not a Tom Brady fan, so I know you'd love to see the Browns win this one. Do you think they can? Honestly, it's hard to pick the Bucks with the way they've looked this season offensively. I think the Browns kind of have the perfect formula on offense to be able to combat what the Bucks do well on defense. You know, they they run the ball. The Browns, since Kevin Stefanski was the coach and had Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt together, they have one of the best running attacks in the NFL. So I think they can get it going against the Bucs, even though the Bucs over the last three seasons have had one of the best run defenses. It's kind of, you know, great against great. And also, you know, then, then the Bucs, you throw in the Bucs, have Tom Brady, like, I don't like Tom Brady, but I'm not stupid. Like, I understand his greatness and what they have on offense. But the offense has looked dysfunctional this year. And I think Miles Garrett can make a big difference in this game for the Browns. And I think he can have, you know, two, three sacks. I think he can disrupt this game, uh, force a turnover at some point, you know, strip sack on Tom Brady to really make a difference in this game. I do think the Browns will win. 
So I'm really, I'm really struggling here because, you know, everything we know what the Bucks have been, and we know what Tom Brady is, but they're not that right now. And I don't, I don't know why. We've talked about obviously Brady's going through a lot of stuff, um, and that's going to, ha- I mean, that's going to take its toll. And and we've talked about whether that has been a factor. If that's a factor, he could he could come out of it any time. He could also not come out of any time, but he could come out of any time. My my concern with what's going on in Tampa Bay more is about coaching, right? I mean, there was a there was a coaching handoff. You got the same players, you got the same systems you you've hired internally. Still doesn't mean you got the right people in there. And I don't know I don't know whether it's Bowles as a head coach. I don't know if it's Leftwich as the offensive coordinator. I don't know that it's either of them. Um, but there, there's problems. There's significant problems, and they're only five and five, and they've yet to show me what they're capable of. Uh, we're going into Cleveland, and I don't know, man. I keep wanting to say Cleveland. I keep wanting to take Cleveland. They're at home. The Bucks are struggling. The, the Browns thought they were going to win. You know, the first part of the game yesterday. I just, I'm having a hard time picking against the Bucks, but I know it's my biases from from years past. I wouldn't let, let me. Let yep. me help you with something that that I was thinking about when I was picking this game, okay? Because the Bucks are a warm weather team. They're in Florida. This time of year in Cleveland, every week it's going to suck. It's going to be raining or snowing or be really cold, and that's going to affect every team that plays there, but the Browns are used to it. So that's not a bad point. Um, looking at the forecast, it's going to be in the 40s, so it's not going to be bitter cold. It looks like rain's in the forecast for Sunday that that's a pretty good point even though you know Brady played in New England for so long the rest of the team and you still acclimate right I mean we're from Indianapolis but there ain't no way in hell I'm going back up there in the winter so I that's that's a good point I I just I don't even know that I can pick one for the show I hate you know I don't know if it's gonna you know people are gonna be disappointed uh send me hate mail or whatever but I wouldn't this is a toss-up for me I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns win this game is what I want to say but I can't pick them. So maybe I'm picking the Bucks, and I, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns win. I, I don't know. But I, since I don't have to pick, I'm not going <laughs> to. And you can't make me. So Yeah, I, I'll let you slide on this one. <laughs> so uh, Ravens at the Jags, interesting game. But we got a seasoned team in Baltimore. They've got the division lead. They know what's at stake. You believe that Lamar Jackson is going to start rising up to the occasion they've got a seasoned coach who's been around the block for 50 some years because his grew up his dad was a coach his brother's a coach i don't i don't see i don't see the ravens losing this game that's not to discount the jaguars i just think the ravens are 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 better are in a better position to win this game this weekend yeah you know teams off buys i'm always a little biased towards teams off buys they should they should be more prepared you would think they're more prepared so i'm inclined to have some thought to pick the Jaguars, but the Ravens have Lamar Jackson. Like, it's hard to pick against Lamar Jackson. Like, even with as depleted as they are with injuries, uh, especially to receiver and already being short on receivers coming into the season, like, Lamar Jackson's Lamar Jackson. They're able to figure it out. And even though that team's not as good defensively, that's the thing that that makes me – it makes it hard to pick the Ravens because they're not as good usually – defensively but they've been better of recent so I'm, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick the Ravens I I, I feel like I'd I'd be stupid to pick the Jaguars I'm just yeah I was Ravens. I'm glad you said it because I had gone the other way I would have said don't be stupid yeah because um, I, I I just I like a lot of the players that are currently on the Jaguars so sometimes I want to pick them but they just don't look like a good football team recently yeah they're struggling um and you know they They've had some some moments, especially early in the season, but it doesn't look like they're going anywhere fast. All right, next game, Saints at 49ers. Interesting game. The Saints are in the hunt for the NFC South, but they're going all the way over to San Francisco, and I believe that San Francisco is – I believe they're a contender. And so, by all rights, San Francisco should win this game. That's how I feel, too. You know, whether it's Andy Dalton, it seems like they want to stick with Andy Dalton, even though Jameis Winston's basically crying in the press also. You know, the 49ers are just a different team. Right. Yep. Different class of team this year. Yep. Agreed. Uh, all right. Last game is the Packers at the Eagles. Is Rodgers washed up? Is this it? I don't know. Like, 
he's the back-to-back MVP, so I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that the thumb that he's talking about is is actually affecting him. Like, I, I would believe him when he says that. And I, so I don't want to say it's him. You also have to look at who he's throwing the ball to. But you look at that Titans game, there were multiple throws. Like Sammy Watkins wide open in the middle of the field, and he, it was out, out of range from Sammy Watkins. There was another throw down the sideline. I think it was to uh, Alan Lazard. Maybe it was great. Yeah, Alan Lazard. It was 13 on the sideline, and it was too far for him. Like, But he had his guy beat things that you don't normally see Rodgers do. So, again, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that it, it is the thumb that's really bothering bothering him I also think you know Matt LaFleur has had the benefit of having the the Aaron Rodgers Devontae Adams combination that's yeah. one of the best in NFL history and, and you're seeing the flaws in his offense but um, you know with all that said there's just there's no way I can take the Packers against the Eagles here no 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 and the Eagles got the easiest schedule in the league we need right I mean we that's been part of the conversation but again, they're still what eight and one. They still, they still put together a, a winning comeback drive. Winners find a way to win in the end. And until the Eagles show me otherwise, these are teams headed in two different directions. They're going into Philadelphia. I, I, I can't take the Packers. Now, it's not to say that that Aaron Rodgers of old he couldn't he could come in and put up four hundred yards and and he, they could beat the Eagles. They could certainly upset him. But I don't think it's going to happen. I'm taking the Eagles. Yeah, and don't discount the fact that the Eagles brought in Indomitian Zoo, Linval Joseph. Right. They, played a, they played a huge role against the Colts in that second half in that game and, and helped the Eagles win that game. And that was the one area a couple weeks ago you said, you know, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon could have a huge game against the Eagles. That's probably not going to happen, and the passing game hasn't been working for the Packers. Yeah. So could get ugly. It could get ugly. That's That's the other part of this. I would – put better odds on the Eagles blowing the Packers out than I would the Packers upsetting the Eagles for sure. Yeah. Like 40 to three, like Cowboys versus Vikings kind of game. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah for sure. So, cool. 